Hello, I'm Instana CTO Chris Bailey and welcome to the first instalment of Inside Instana. In these sessions, I and other technical leaders from the Instana team will be taking you through some of the technologies and capabilities that we've been working on as part of the IBM Instana Observability product. Now, in this session, I'm going to start by giving you an overview of the Instana architecture and how it's designed for scale and resilience and how we build the Instana platform. The goal of Instana is to provide automated observability, to make it as simple as possible for operations and SRE teams to keep their applications, services and infrastructure up and running 24 by 7. Now, in order to do that, we build a complete, essentially a digital twin of every single environment that we're monitoring. We collect data every second. We collect 100% of every trace. And we do this for a number of reasons. One of them is you know, our ability to do analysis and to do alerting and have context res to resolve problems is significantly better the higher the quality of data and the context that we have. And the second part is that the faster we get that data, the faster we analyze that data, the faster we can actually start to alert on it and take either reactive or mitigation actions to either recover or prevent problems in the first place. Now, what that means is Instana at its core is actually an instant analytics platform. And that's where Instana gets its name. Instana actually means instant analytics. And it is at its core and was designed to be a petabyte scale streaming analytics platform. So what does that mean, right? How is that actually built? Well, so first of all, we have function-based pipelines. So yes, we collect different types of telemetry. We collect metrics and logs and traces and events and performance profiles and end user monitoring and synthetic test results. For each of these, we have an individual pipeline that is optimized to the type of data that we're collecting and the analytics that we have to do on top of it. Now, the entire platform is fully multi-tenant, but we do provide some single tenant services inside that so that we can put resource bounds and guaranteed resources on them for quality of service. And the entire pipeline end to end is event based processing using Kafka streams with back pressure for resilience. Now, all of this is implemented as decoupled microservices. So we have both horizontal and vertical scaling. Every single component can horizontally scale by adding more instance of it. Um, being deployed onto a Kubernetes platform gives us inbuilt resilience and fault tolerance, and we have the ability to apply rate limiting and those resource controls for resource intensive components. Now, that brings the data in and allows us to do stream processing of it. Behind that, we have a set of distributed data stores. So we use different data stores for each type of data, optimized to that data type. Those stores are horizontally scalable. They are sharded over different availability zones. And the design of the platform, right? we have this kind of internal uh, non-functional requirement that the latency from a data point being created on the platform that we're um, monitoring to the point that it's transmitted to the Instana backend to the point that we have done analytics over it and are able to alert should be no more than three seconds. So hugely fast stream processing being done using loosely coupled microservices, doing Kafka stream processing on a main Kafka bus streaming that data into data stores as fast as possible. And this is, of course, deployed across multiple availability zones. All of the microservices are able to fail, and because they are stateless, they can um, come back up and, can, and resume processing. We are able to lose individual instances of databases because they are spread over availability zones, and all of the data is replicated and sharded. Now, we run this as SaaS. We, we are multi-cloud and multi-region. A single SaaS region processes, you know, we have customers with tens of thousands of hosts being monitored, generating tens of millions of metrics a second, generating you know, multiple millions of trace records a second. 
So we are able to take huge, huge volumes of high quality data and process them at high speed. And that quality of data, that context of data, allows us to do a level of analytics which none of our competitors is able to do, and it allows us to alert as quickly as possible. And we want to be able to alert as quickly as possible because, so let's say you have a four nines goal for availability. That gives you about 4.3 minutes of downtime a month. Right? 4.3 minutes is not long enough really for human to react to that. So the faster we can collect data, the faster we can analyze it and have quality data so that we can do complex analytics that is highly accurate, the faster we can react to that, the faster we can start to run automations to restore service and make sure that incidents are actually resolved within that quality of service time window. So we run at scale with multi-region, multi-cloud SaaS. Of course, it's also possible to take that and self-host it. Um, and that's done in two fashions. One is to bring your own Kubernetes. So you can bring your own OpenShift, CNCF Kubernetes, etc., and you can take Instana and run it on the back end. And it's referred to as self-hosted because when you run it yourself, you are actually running exactly what we have when we run a SaaS region, which means you get full multi-tenancy, etc., on top of that. You can also use our standard deployment, which means you don't have to be aware or manage Kubernetes yourself. That's actually done as part of the Instana install package. So that's a lot of words telling you about um, Instana and what Instanas look like. Let's actually go and see it because, of course, each of our Instana regions is monitored and managed and we do automatic operations using Instana itself. So let's take a look at one of those SaaS regions. This is the infrastructure view for one of our SaaS regions. And as you can see, it's quite a large scale deployment that's occurring on Kubernetes. So as you scroll in, you can see that we've grouped our resources um, according to function. We have the app data writer. Now this is our pipeline for bringing in application data. And by that we mean traces and spans. Here is ClickHouse. Um, and ClickHouse is one of our primary stores of data. It's used for traces. It's also used for our logging capability. So we can, you know, as you would inside Instana, you can look at all of the hosts running inside ClickHouse. Um, I can look at one of those hosts, and if I zoom in a bit further, I can see that inside that host, I have three processors running. There's an instance of the ClickHouse database. There's an Instana agent, which is how we're monitoring our infrastructure and our services. And we have um, an instance of CrowdStrike. So I can go and look at my ClickHouse database, um, and we can look at the rate of queries and what's happening here. So we're these are the call traces, and we have website monitoring beacons, we have logs, etc., running into ClickHouse. So, as I said, Instana itself is really a streaming analytics platform. We take data, we in real time ingest, store, analyze that data, looking for problems, creating alerts, using the context of the problems, the grouping of the problems that we see to do probable cause and to recommend actions. Thank you for attending the first session. Um, in the next session, I'm going to be talking to one of our other technical leaders and they will be taking you through what they're currently working on and giving you a demo so that you can see some of the technology as it's being built.